thanks for joining me, hanging out for a little bit. Um, I, I wanted to start here. Uh, you, interestingly enough, were able to, to play a role in the recruitment of Monte Smith, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, a bunch of guys that may end up going the first round at Alabama. Kind of, kind of left as a parting gift uh, before you took off to, to take that OC job at, at Arizona State. And actually, I kind of just realized here recently, you were around when y'all were recruiting Brandon Ayuk at Arizona State as well, I guess. Um, That's right. I, I'm just kind of curious in, in looking back at the recruitments, especially that Alabama class, kind of if, if there was any interesting stories about the process of that class coming together and, and if you guys knew how special that group could be. Well, I think those guys, the biggest thing is uh, we had great relationships with all of those kids and their families. You know, I think um, Tyrell Shavers, who's on the Bama uh, roster now, was in that group as well. Uh, but, you know, all of those guys were – players that we knew about at a young age, in particular, Devontae Smith and Jerry Judy, both of which were in our camp, even as eighth and ninth graders, uh, and were exceptional, you know, at a young age. You know, I think what stands out to me about uh, Jerry, Henry, Devontae, is not only they are exceptional people, but they are highly, highly motivated. Um, they were great teammates. Uh, from all that I've heard within the Alabama building, they had a great attitude, great approach. They were selfless and they played well without the ball. Uh, they're certainly dynamic, you know, and when you start talking about their ability to win matchups uh, and make plays as run after catch players, um, they can stretch the field vertical, but also can win individual matchups on critical downs and then make plays after the catch. So the thing I'm most proud about is that. They've all done what we thought they could do. Um, certainly didn't have a chance to coach them at Alabama, but had a chance to coach them every summer uh, coming up and had really good relationships with those guys. Proud of how they handled themselves as people. Uh, I think they're all going to be really good professional players because of that. I think they've got discipline. They've got good attitude. Uh, and they're, we all know that they can be productive and they're competitive. I think they'll play as long as their character allows them to play. Uh, and I think they have that part in their game. Yeah. You're one of the few coaches, I don't, maybe the only coach, uh, I don't know, that that's, that spent a pretty significant chunk of time coaching alongside both Nick Saban and Dabo Sweeney. Um, and I'm just curious, you know, certainly um, the time you spent with them and seeing two of the best in the game work uh, kind of – maybe what the differences in those experiences were. And then as you've sort of moved on to, to your head coaching role, wh which parts of those experiences have you implemented as, as you've sort of built yourself up as a head coach as well? Well, I think there there's tons of similarities in terms of how they operate. You know, I think you've seen Dabo evolve over time uh, as he's built that Clemson football. It's truly an organization much like the Alabama program. There's great infrastructure. Uh, I think both coaches are exceptional uh, people. They've, they're very intelligent. They've got great character. They're, they have conviction about what they think their team should be, you know, uh, and they, they're consistent. They're fair. Uh, I think the expectations are clearly defined. Um, and I think over time, they're a little bit different in terms of maybe how they go about it. But those key elements, uh, I think, is what has allowed them to sustain. You know, they certainly both have recruited at a very high level. And then once the player arrives, they've got a very detailed plan for that player uh, each individual year of their career, you know. So all the things that you would need to have success, I think they have that. Certainly they've got really good administration. Uh, that is supporting them, their vision for their program, giving them the resources and the people. Um, and then they've, they've hired well. You know, they've hired really good people. And over time, uh, they've always been uh, willing to adapt, adjust, evolve. Uh, and they're not going anywhere. I think they've got great uh, rosters and they've got really good coaching staffs. And they have a proven year-round process uh, that ultimately is producing the end result that we get a chance to see in the fall. 
j just in in the recent years i mean I, it's pretty clear obviously the sex success you've had um you know there, there's a lot of elements that you bring from both programs but you seem to have hired really well also in, in your limited time in louisiana um and obviously have recruited really well um also w w what are the sort of the process to, to being able to identify good young coaches and get them on your staff is, is there a a secret sauce to, to being able to to build your staff well i think it's it's probably the most difficult that thing that you do uh, as a head coach and no one really talks about that you know i think just looking back at that first year and those first couple months that was probably the biggest challenge i knew exactly what we would do once we got everybody hired but making decisions on those individual people that were going to really have a critical role in your organization. So, you know, patience, I think is key, you know, not getting uh, in a hurry, you know, and really vetting the people that you are considering. Uh, we had a really thorough uh, evaluation process in terms of who we hired. Um, I do think that we started with some key coordinator positions, you know, Rob Sell, mm -hmm. Our offensive coordinator and offensive line coach has been outstanding. He's a guy that I've known since 2011, a great sounding board. And then Mark Hockey uh, is our strength coach, and he's our associate head coach. Uh, and he certainly has had a tremendous impact uh, in our organization. So we started with those two guys. Those are the two guys that I really had prior relationships with. And then, you know, at, after that, um, you know, we started individually working our way through the staff. Certainly, th there was people, your phone goes, you know, right? <laughs> crazy. Everybody's got a guy you need to hire, right? Yeah. So, uh, but I think we took our time. We were patient. Uh, what gets overlooked, I think, is that as you make each of those individual hires, the dynamic may change, you know, relative to what you need. Uh, you start with the character. Uh, integrity of the person and then you think about okay are they competent at what we're asking them to do uh, do they have a certain level of expertise in the area that we're assigning them uh, and then the recruiting footprint piece uh, is a big part so it's a combination of all those um, I think we hit it out of the park you know we got a great group uh, we had some turnover each year uh, this year, we lost our defensive coordinator and, op and our uh, special teams coordinator. And I've been really pleased and I'm excited about the, the promotion that we made at defensive coordinator with Patrick Tony, the addition of Austin Armstrong, the addition of Robbie Disher. So it's been great, you know, and I, I think that is the most important element is the people that you hire. Because uh, certainly, you know, once you get in these leadership positions, you quickly realize how dependent you are on having great people. Your offense over the last few years has been one of the most explosive in the in the country. I mean, from a um, just in terms of the way it's put together with the the, the explosive run game, you are able to be physical but still be dynamic. And, and I'm just curious, this is sort of your second go rounds running an offense dating back to Clemson about a decade ago. Over the last ten years, you know, where where have you where have been your sort of your I guess inspirations or the guys you've drawn from or, or how have you built this system now? Because it, it seems to be really clicking at a high level. Well, I think, you know, I had an opportunity to call plays at a really young age, probably wasn't prepared for that opportunity. Didn't know what I didn't know, if that makes sense. Um, now I was working really hard, giving great effort, doing the best that I, I could do or felt like I could do. Um, and certainly thankful for that opportunity. I think that really is a, has made a difference going forward. Uh, but then you got an opportunity to kind of eat a piece of humble pie and then go work with some really, really good offensive coaches, you know, starting with Jim McElwain, who's an exceptional teacher, um, you know, having a chance to be around him that first year at Alabama. Doug Nussmeyer, who's with the Cowboys now, was a tremendous coach. Uh, then Lane Kiffin. Uh, we had several other people in the building throughout that time as this, that were as position coaches, assistant coaches, Mario Cristobal, um, Eric Kiesel, Mike Loxley, um, Steve Sarkeesian, 
Uh, and then being a part of that Alabama blueprint and watching the year round plan for development, how we talked at a very high level there, observing the defensive plan, which it's well documented how well they play defense at Alabama. So I think it's a combination of all those things. The year with Todd Graham was great. You know, his, his track record with offensive coaches has been outstanding. Uh, and some of his insight, you know, into what gives defensive, pro- defensive coaches problems. So uh, all of that, I think we're, this will be our third year or fourth year coming up if you count Arizona State. Uh, in this system, we kind of built it from scratch. Uh, had a chance to work with some great people at Arizona State that first year. Rob Likens, who's the receivers coach at Miami now, was a was a terrific coach, uh, and he certainly impacted what we did uh, there. So, you know, I think you put good people around you. You're we're all a product of our experiences in the past and the people that we've learned from. Um, and, and for me, that is exactly the case, you know, going all the way back to playing for my dad, who was a high school coach. Uh, I'll ask you one more and I'll let you go. What is, you know, given that you're unique in the sense that you've you sort of spent time with a couple of programs at the top of the food chain, like Clemson and Alabama, and now you're one of the top group of five programs in the country. I'm curious what your perspective is on the postseason, what the maybe the perfect setup should be for a postseason and crowning a national champion. Have you got some thoughts on, on how you would set it up if, if you were in charge? Well, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, we're in the process of trying to establish ourselves as one of those teams and programs that could be in that conversation. Uh, we're not there yet uh, by no means, but we are improving. Uh, we have become somewhat relevant in our league. You know, we've won our division two years in a row and been in the championship game, but we've got work left to do. Um, I think that it's awesome that the group of five teams have gotten competitive enough. Um, I think it's been well documented here lately what some of those group of five teams have been able to do. I know within our league, there's been great victories, you know, whether that's uh, Troy and their wins uh, Georgia State last year, certainly App State has uh, a tremendous history. Uh, so it's been proven that those teams can be competitive if given that opportunity. So um, I don't necessarily have an opinion relative to one of those teams getting in the Final Four. You know, having played in the college football playoff a number of times, uh, I think I fully comprehend what that is about. You know, so. Uh, I do think it's great that there's a New Year's Six opportunity. Um, one of the things that I've, I've had conversations with people about is if you had a four-team college football playoff for a group of five teams, you know, could that be a marketable scenario? You know, could, could there be some money made off of that? And I, I do think that that would be an intriguing concept, much like the FCS tournament. If, even if you just said, all right, we're going to pick the four best teams, there's going to be rankings throughout the year uh, just to create more coverage and opportunity for that level of football. So that's one idea that I think might work. Um, but I, I, do, I do think it's great that there's an opportunity for a group of five team and a New Year's Six opportunity. Coach, uh, I appreciate you, you spending some time with me. I know uh, a lot going on at home and, and elsewhere. So, uh, Good luck the rest of the quarantine, and uh, uh, hope hope you uh, get through it on the other side and we get to play football in the fall. All right, Barton. Thanks, man. I appreciate all your help, and, and thanks for covering our team.